Yo, 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 what it do, though? Jokes to baby. I already know, man. Back again with another episode of Controversial Conversation. Actually, I gotta be, gotta be real with y'all. We're doing something different this time. So, if y'all been following along, you know, my partner, Tony B, got his own podcast, The Open Minded Skeptic. Thing is brilliant, amazing. The production value, the content, definitely worth a watch and a replay. But uh, we decided to join forces, and whenever we joined forces, we felt that we needed to go ahead and give us some type of catchy superhero name, right? So whenever he's going to come over here and help me with the executive producing or maybe even get in front of the microphone and the cam, we're going to call this a controversial conversation with an open-minded skeptic. And when I have the pleasure of being able to go on his show or help with the producing of that, we're going to call that an open-minded skeptic having a controversial conversation. So this is the first time that we're actually joining forces to combine together our efforts to create a production. And honestly, I'm excited because the thing that I get to talk about, though it is sad, it's something that brings a lot of, a lot of passion to me, a lot of a lot of emotions that I think are, are worth feeling. So today we're gonna talk about the life and times of Sidney Poitier. As a millennial, I didn't really get the chance to truly understand like the significance of somebody like Sidney Poitier because like, y'all know how the American school system is. It kind of shields you from learning about certain people and then they enforce heroes upon you. So I never got a chance to really know who this guy was until I did independent study. And I started seeing like, bruh, this, this man in the 50s and 60s, this dark-skinned bohemian immigrant, right? This, this man was a leading top 10 man in Hollywood breaking down barriers. Without Sydney, like without Sydney, there is no Jamie. There is no Denzel. There's no Viola. There's no Tyler Perry. There's none of that at this current moment. Who knows how long it would have taken? Now, he was not the first, right? He wasn't the first African-American to win an Academy. That was Hattie McDaniel, and she won it for Best Supporting Actress in Gone with the Wind. But he is actually the first African-American to win the Academy Award for Best Actor, and he almost won it in 1951, but didn't work. And then came the movie Lilies of the Field, where this charismatic, witty, amazing handyman is just on this trail trying to find life to a degree, stops off in this place with these nuns. And it's this interaction between the nuns and him that is just so poetic, so beautiful, so touching and endearing. And it's just something that you just, you, you weren't prepared for. And obviously the world wasn't prepared for it because he did end up winning the Academy for that. But what that did, even though not another <sighs> black person won an Academy until 2003, I believe, but you know, whatever, we ain't talking about that. But what it did was allow African-American men and women to start doing complex roles. No more stereotype tropes. Of course we did have black exploitation in the seventies, but what I'm saying is a black person was now being taken serious in Hollywood. Sydney did that for us, and it wasn't always like that for him. Now, he was 15 years old when he came to the United States. He lived in Florida with his brother. His parents sent him away from the Bahamas because they thought that he was actually leading down a life of, as they say, delinquency. So he's chilling with his brother. He's trying to figure things out, but he has a culture shock. He's like, why? Why do these people not like me for my skin color? I've never had that issue. The best quote that I found that he actually expounds upon this is this. I was not what I was required to be in Florida. I was not that. I couldn't be that. I was taught that I had basic rights as a human being. I was taught that I was someone. I knew we had no money. Still, I was taught that I was someone. We had no electricity and no running water. Still, I was taught that I was someone. I had very little education a year and a half, in fact, was all the schooling I was exposed to 
Still, I knew that I was someone. Now, that's the type of determination, perseverance, and will and drive within somebody at such a young age to know that they are destined for something bigger than themselves. And it was not lost on him that he had a duty, ability, and responsibility to the people coming up after him. He knew that he was going to have to take the brunt of things. So he made sure that every role he played was a man of honor, integrity, was a distinguished gentleman, was ethical, and more times than none, more ethical than the white counterparts that he was acting alongside. And none other or none more enjoyable than as they call the slap herd around the world. Now, if you're familiar, you already know where I'm going with this, but if you're not, let's talk about it. So there's a movie called In the Heat of the Night where he's playing this homicide detective. He's trying to figure something out. So he's talking to this plantation owner by the name of Mr. Endicott. And Mr. Endicott just does not like being questioned by a black man. So as Sidney's character, uh, Mr. Tibbs, is talking to Mr. Endicott, he's like, do you know about the whereabouts of so-and-so? Or was he seen here? I can't remember the exact lines, right? But so it, it, it's like a, a, a fury-filled emotion that just comes over Mr. Endicott. He just... Slap Sydney, and Sydney slaps that man back, and he slaps him for Black America. And God, dog it, it was one of the greatest scenes in cinematic history. And you know why it happened? Because he said it had to happen. He said, "If you are gonna slap me, I'm slapping you back." Put it in the contract, bruh. That is a boss move. Sydney was a boss beyond bosses. There's so many things that are amazing about this man that. It, it really takes time to reflect upon the things that he has done. The parallels between certain people, though, are something that I don't want to, like, not mention. There's another person that I'm going to speak about today, and his name is Chadwick. <sighs> yeah, I, um, I, I sometimes struggle talking about, um, talking about the impact that Chadwick Boseman had on my life. He, uh, you see, he was more than the sum of the roles that he played. Chadwick Boseman to me now is an ideal. He is like the highest level of greatness that you can aspire to. When I think about who I could be, the best possible version of myself, I think about Chadwick and who he would be and who he was and how he dedicated himself to make the world better. And the world was better for having him. And the world is better for knowing him. But there's parallels between these two. So the thing that was so amazing about Sidney is that you can hold him up as one of the most moral, amazing, good men. And he like exuded that in everything he did, from acting to activism to philanthropy. Did not matter. He did it with grace and eloquence. And he was always the man that you knew he was no doubt. And I love that about him. And what he did was he inspired a generation of black men and women to also walk in that path. And that's the same thing. That is the same thing that Chadwick has done for young black, and black boys and girls. He has given them a hero, not just on the screen, off the screen. He has given them somebody to aspire to, somebody to see the most beautiful, greatest, masterful versions of themselves. He was the walking embodiment of that. And that's what he gave us. He gave us that every time we saw him, whether it was an interview, whether it was a movie, whether it was just some behind the scenes clips where you, you just see him talking with everybody. His smile was so beautiful. It brightened everything. The way that the, the people talked about him that worked with him and how, how hard it hit them because of how much, how much he gave. He gave everything he had. So who are we to give less? That's what I want you to really get from this. I need you to truly understand that there is, there's untapped potential within you. You have the ability to be greater than you ever thought. And the way that I know this 
is because I got the chance, the chance to experience watching and envisioning these two amazing monumental icons. These men were bigger than life. These men were one thing that I can never truly like describe. But I know that every time I see a picture or a video or this interview or I think about who these people are, to me, it always fills me with love, joy, and a sense of honor. It, it, it shows me that without them, there is none of this. There isn't. The show isn't here. I'm not here doing this. I don't know what I'm doing, but I don't dream like that. If I don't have people set that path for me to walk that path after them, I don't have a path to walk. Sure, people forge their own, but not everybody has that ability. Not everybody can be Sydney. Not everybody can be Chadwick. But everybody can be the best versions of themselves. And that's what we have to strive for. In these crazy, chaotic times of uncertainty, of not knowing what is going on, always remember that there are people who have set the example, who have laid the precedent of how to be good, ethical, moral, righteous, upstanding. We have blueprints and we don't have any excuses to use anymore to not be better to ourselves and to each other. So I just wanna thank Mr. Sidney Poitier, and I would just want to thank Mr. Chadwick Boseman for inspiring, for influencing, for motivating, and for helping me to see who I can be. The greatest version of myself, though I haven't reached it yet, I know it's something to aspire to. I know it's something that can be truly captivating and can help change the world because I've seen these men do that very thing. And it wasn't just because they were amazing actors. It was because they were amazing men. Yes, they were great, but they were also good. Never forget that. So, right now, I just want to leave you with the life and times of Sidney Poitier. No more yaza. It won't break. Was Mr. Colbert ever in this greenhouse? Say last night about midnight. Sydney Potier. Ambassador and actor, Sidney Poitier has left an indelible mark on American culture. Rising from the tomato farms of the Bahamas, his talent led him to Broadway, Hollywood, and global acclaim. In front of black and white audiences struggling to write the nation's moral compass, Sidney Poitier brought us the common tragedy of racism, the inspiring possibility of reconciliation, and the simple joys of everyday life. Ultimately, the man would mirror the character and both would advance the nation's dialogue on race and respect. How does 15 it? years old, surviving on your own on the street in New York. How did you survive? Okay. In the window, there's a sign that says, Relief Dishwasher Wanted. And I went down there, and they put me to work. Not only did they put me to work, they were paying four bucks a night, and I could eat for three meals. So when I finished the first night's work, I went to the bus station, got my little valise out, intending not to spend my $4 as I spent my $3, I went to sleep in the toilet. There used to be pay toilets in the, and it cost a nickel 
So I put a nickel in, and I got in, I put down the seat, I sat there, put my feet up against the door, and I would sleep uncomfortably, needless to say. My mother was a certain kind of woman, and my dad was a certain kind of person. They had a view of life. They passed on to me everything that they had learned, and they hoped that I would carry it with me into my adulthood. I think the same values that he was raised with, with his parents, are the values that he passed on to us. And, yeah. and they're important to me for my daughter, too. Yeah. This is my wife, Mrs. Henry Cobb. Dorothy, this is the boy I told you about, living at the house, helping me to make the brick for your new library. Henry, she's not really here. Yes, she is. You don't see her, do you? No. Don't see her. Well, that's good, because if you saw her... <laughs> if I saw her... But you talk to her. You talk to somebody every day for 60 years. You don't stop just because they die. Well, it's, it's English lesson time. I build a chapel. I build a chapel. You build a chapel. You build a chapel. Oh, we build a chapel. We build a chapel. He built the chapel. Amen. 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 Sing it over. Amen. 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 See the baby wrapped in the manger on Christmas morning. Who marvel at his wisdom Down at the Jordan Where John was baptizing And saving all sinners See him at the seaside Talking with the fishermen And making them disciples Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, family from all around the world, I thank you so much for just giving me a quick moment of your time. You know, I know a lot of people have spoken on how Chadwick Boseman impacted their life. And it was a beautiful outpouring of adoration and admiration and love for somebody who truly deserved it. I'm so grateful to see how he impacted so many people similarly to how he did the same for me. But I felt that it was only right that I say a little something. Something that I feel for myself will help memorialize, give tribute to, and honor a real live superhero. Because you see, far too often are we callously reminded of the unwavering and unforgiving truth that life is just unfair. As a matter of fact, I would say cruel is a more apt description of the turmoil sometimes experienced 
when navigating through this existence. Best summed up by the brilliant poetic rapper AZ. Life is a bitch and then you die. That's why we get high. Because you never know when you're going to go. And so as I sit here, you know, thinking about how Nipsey Hussle's born day had passed and Kobe Bryant's born day had passed and my grandfather, the professor, had passed and the Honorable John Lewis had passed and so many heroes and icons and titans had passed. And then this one. You see, to understand why this death hit the black community in a deeper, emotional, bordering on spiritual level is because of what he truly represented. He was more than just the sum of his roles, though he portrayed with pinpoint accuracy and a phenomenal grasp of these historic figures that we will never forget. Bringing the likes of Jackie Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, and James Brown to the screen and exemplifying black excellence in every part that he played. And then there was Prince T'Challa, the hero that transcended the screen and became a beacon of hope and the example to strive for that will forever alter the self-love, self-esteem, and self-confidence of little black boys and girls everywhere. You see, more than just a character in the MCU, Prince, and actually more recently King, T'Challa was the best of us because Chadwick Boseman was the best of us. We saw in him what we knew we could see in ourselves if we just believed enough. You know, hero, hero is a funny word. You know, it, I know the people that I mentioned earlier might not be heroes to all, but to me, they, they were the epitome of a hero. Because a hero isn't always in the cape or the uniform. Hero is somebody who inspires you to be the greatest version of yourself. So even though T'Challa, the Black Panther, was the superhero on the screen, Chadwick Boseman was the superhero off the screen. Battling cancer and still donning that all black vibranium fit that we've come to love just to bring us hope and faith that we can all be heroes it will never be forgotten. And his ability to inspire will forever be his greatest superpower. He will be loved. He will be missed but he will never be forgotten. Thank you, Mr. Bozeman, for showing this grown man that he can be anything he ever dreamed of. Thank you, Mr. Bozeman, for reactivating the childlike enthusiasm and love for law, love for life, I thought I lost. Thank you, Mr. Bozeman. 
Thank you, Mr. Bozeman, for being a beautiful, shining example of black excellence and black royalty. Long live King T'Challa. Long live Chadwick Boseman. Wakanda forever. <laughs>